In this session, we're going to cover the economic production quantity called the EPQ model. It's a widely used model that helps manufacturers decide on the optimal production quantity. We're going to have a comparison with the EOQ model, and I'm sure this comparison is going to help you understand very well the concepts underlying the EPQ model. So let's remember what we discussed in the EOQ model. You know, the context of the EOQ model, as we uh, discussed before, that we have a retailer who faces a demand from his customers, an annual demand that we usually we denote as uh, capital D. For example, this annual demand can be 12,000 units per year. Of course, this is a retailer. In order to satisfy this demand, he has to order in turn the items from his suppliers. So, in order to satisfy an annual demand capital D, eventually he's going to order a total of annual of capital D from the supplier during a year. But the question is, how does he order it? Does he order the whole quantity uh, by January 1st or what? In fact, he can do it, but we uh, learned from uh, what we discussed in the EOQ model that he will be incurring then a very high carrying cost. So it makes sense that he splits the annual demand into smaller order quantities Q. All right. So, but the question is, what should be that quantity Q? What's that value of Q? The retailer has unlimited number of choices. For example, he can order 12,000, as we said. This is an extreme case where he will order one time only, or he can split it into two, so 6,000 every time, so he'll order two times. He can, do, he can order 3,000, so he'll be ordering four times, or he can order 1,000. So he will order 12 times, etc. There are so many options. And that's why uh, we need a model to help us determine what's the best or what's the optimal quantity. And that gives the name for the EOQ model, the economic order quantity, the economic order quantity. Why? Why it's called economic? Because this is the model that tells us what's the quantity that would optimize our performance in which aspects that it minimizes our total inventory cost. So when we decide to order that quantity, let's see how this quantity will, will, will vary with time. Okay, so here we have on the horizontal axis the time, on the vertical axis I have the inventory that I have on hand. Remember in the EOQ model, we said that when you place an order Q with your supplier, he send you all the Q in one shipment, right? So your inventory on hand will uh, uh, directly jump from zero to Q. And then to satisfy your demand, you're going to use whatever you have on hand and you satisfy demand at the rate D, as you can see here from that inclined line. And as we reach almost zero on hand, we receive the new shipment, so don't, we don't have any stock out. And again, we repeat the same uh, cycle again and again and again. And remember, we call every one of these triangles a cycle. So what changes in the EPQ model? In fact, not much. The same concept still applies, but what changes is the context. First of all, we don't have a, a retailer anymore. Right? So this is not a retailer. Now we have a manufacturer who can make the item. So which means we don't need the supplier anymore. All right. So a manufacturer now faces a demand of capital D from his customer, and he wants to decide on the batch size. And each time he wants to make certain quantity, what should be the quantity? It's exactly the same concept here. For example, the manufacturer may decide, let me make all the 12,000 
at a time. So if he has an equipment that can make, let's say, 500 units um, a day, he will run this uh, um, equipment for 24 days. So he'll make 12,000 and that's it. He will stop the machine and he will start satisfying the demand from the inventory that he built up. However, as we also agreed in the EOQ model that most probably this is not economical because he will be carrying a lot of items that cost sometimes a lot and he's not going to sell it until one year from today. And the question remains the same, what should be the best quantity? Now we don't call it the order quantity, but we call it the production quantity or the batch size. One more thing changes here uh, uh, in terms of the profile that we have, how the quantity on hand changes the time. You see in the EOQ model, because we are ordering from a supplier and the supplier ships the quantity for us, we receive all the quantity at one time. So that's why the inventory on hand jumps from zero to Q. This is not possible anymore in the case when we are making the item because we need time. So remember we said that, for example, the equipment can make 500 a day. All right, so every day I can make 500. So my production will be similar to the line of demand that we showed here. You see, because that was a demand, let's say 40 per day. So the quantity on hand was decreasing at this constant rate at an inclined line. Similarly, now if we are making the item, okay, the inventory built up line will be now an inclined line like that. And then we decide at this point that let's stop here. So this will be our batch size. So I stop here. And this is what I have done so far. And I start satisfying the demand from what I have on hand. Here we go. This will be the demand rate. I'm going to show you in a much better illustration uh, the profile of the quantity in the EPQ model in the next slide. So bear with me. All right, so let's dig more now to see what really happens with the quantity on hand or the inventory level in an EPQ uh, context. Okay, uh, to understand uh, the numbers in the coming illustration, uh, this example is based on the following context. Here we have a uh, juice producer who makes juice uh, eventually. So he needs bottles, right? So he can buy the bottles from his supplier. And for this, uh, then he, if you want to decide on the best quantity, he has to use the EOQ model. However, he can make the empty bottles himself. All right, so that's why in the next illustration, you'll see that we're talking about bottles. So. Here we go, we are assuming that he can make the bottles internally and of course he will use it internally. So the demand for the empty bottles is an internal demand. It doesn't matter, even if the demand is external, we follow exactly the same uh, 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 logic of the EPQ model. However, I believe this is much easier for students to grab uh, uh, such logic when we talk about the, uh, a production of an item that was going to be used in the same uh, premises. And also, because it's an internal uh, demand, we will call it a consumption rate, which is exactly the same as the demand rate, all right? So don't be confused when you see a U. Anyway, I'm going to repeat that again during the illustration. All right. So what do we have here? Let's see how the quantity on hand will also change with time. Uh, let's assume that we have already made the calculation and we have a, uh, an equipment that can make the bottles at a rate of 4,000 uh, per day. And we run our equipment or the production for three days. All right. So after three days, what would be the total amount of bottles that we have made? We have made an amount of 12,000. Now, I'm making these because, as we said earlier, we need to use it in our filling line where we're going to send these empty bottles for the juice production line and we fill it with juice. 
So assuming that our consumption rate happens at a rate of 1,000 bottles per day. Okay, so what do you think was happening during the first three days? Yes, I was making 4,000 bottles per day, but at the same time, we are consuming 1,000 bottles per day. So do you think we have reached physically uh, an inventory level of 12,000? The answer is no. So that's why I'm showing this line now as dashed line. This is still, yes, the production rate for 1,000 bottles per day. However, this is not how much I'm building in inventory. What I'm building in inventory is shown in this line. And this is the maximum inventory that we have accumulated so far. So what do you think is the rate of inventory built up? It's exactly, it's 4,000 minus 1,000. So the slope of this bold line is B minus, B minus U, the production rate minus the consumption rate. So in fact, we were building up at a rate of 3,000 per day, and that's why the I max here is 9,000. And from this point onward, we're going to be using our, uh, we're going to be using our, inventory on hand okay and the same cycle uh, uh, occurs again and again and again okay so now i believe it's clear for you uh, the profile of the quantity on hand how it varies from the eoq and this is very very important because based on this profile we will be able to determine what are the costs or the inventory costs that we are trying to minimize All right, the holding cost first. As in the EOQ model, remember the holding cost was equal to the average quantity on hand multiplied by the unit carrying cost per year, which we represented by small h. So what the average quantity that we have here? Remember in the EOQ model, it was equal to Q over 2Y because Q was the tip of the triangles that we were showing in the inventory profile, right? What's the tip of the triangle, if you recall from the previous slide? It was I max. That's why the average quantity here is I max over 2, not Q over 2. You see, that's why it was very important for us to see the profile of the inventory on hand so that we can determine the holding cost. And also, it's exactly the same as we did before. We multiply the average quantity by small h, which is the unit carrying cost per year. And this is our annual holding cost. What do you think would be the next cost? In the EOQ, it was the ordering cost, right? The cost that we incur each time we order. In the EPQ, we are not ordering, we are making. And also here, we are incurring cost each time we run the equipment. And what's that cost? We call it the setup cost. What's the setup cost? Setup cost is the cost incurred each time you want to prepare your machineries in order to make a new batch. Okay, so there's a cost. And this cost is usually given to us as capital S. And we have to multiply it by what? Again, similar to the, in, to the EOQ, we multiplied the unit ordering cost, the cost per order, by the number of orders. Here it's the same. We need to know what's the number of production runs, what's the number of batches, or how many cycles. We use exactly the same formula as in the EOQ. Number of cycles is nothing but D over Q. And we multiply it by the setup cost, which is given to us as S. So S is the cost per setup. And that's what makes our annual setup cost to be equal to D over Q times S.